Smart Kid by Heritage Life is proud to bring you an education series entitled My Zimbabwean Education Story, a series that will be telling a range of Zimbabwean education stories. Our second guest is Dr. Zani Dunika. Dr. Zani is a 26-year-old Zimbabwean dentist, makeup artist, and YouTuber. She graduated from the University of Zimbabwe, and she is currently an associate dentist at Timeless Dental Clinic. Hi, Dr. Zani. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, very good. Thank you so much for coming to film with us. Thank you for having me. So you're going to be telling us a bit about why they call you Dr. Zani, but you're also going to be giving us a makeup tutorial. What products are you going to be showing us how to use? Today, I'm going to be using a, a Zimbabwean brand, uh, which is uh, Jack and Gil Cosmetics. They are based at um, Arundel and they sell at other pharmacies. So Jackie Beauty is a Zimbabwean, but she's based in America. And yeah, she's come up with a really, really good brand. So I thought that it would be good to kind of just use a Zimbabwean brand. Okay, okay. So what's the first step you're going to be doing? Uh, I always start with my brows. I know a lot of people have different ways of doing it, but I always prefer to just start with my brows. And I'm going to be using the Jackie Mulo Brow Pen. I mean, this baby is magic. It works magic, guys. Um, if you don't have brows, this will create brows for you. <laughs> so you started doing makeup when you were in dental school? Yeah, I started doing makeup when I was in uni. Uh, well, I use it. College. <laughs> we don't go to uni here. Yeah, so yes, I started doing makeup whilst I was at college. I was always into looking nice and I used to binge watch a lot of YouTube videos. And then I started doing makeup on, on myself. The people liked how I looked and they also then started saying, oh, okay, why don't you do makeup on us? And I started doing makeup on people. And yeah, that's just how it started. It started out as a hobby, something that I just liked and people admired on me. And then later on, I turned it into a business. So was it hard balancing your studies with your makeup? No, not at all. See, it's, uh, it's more of like, something that I was just passionate about mm -hmm. and I was just naturally good at but I just needed to kind of like develop the skill so obviously I'll just find free time whenever I have free time to watch YouTube tutorials um, I even went to Vault Cosmetics like the studio some a few times like a couple of times for just you know brow tutorials learning how to actually do my brow using their products and everything I think that's why I'm so happy with their products and I'm so familiar with their products anyway. So yeah. How did you decide to study medicine? Where did you go for high school? I went to St. Dominic's Chishal Russia. I actually come from a medical background. My whole family is in the medical fraternity. So my father is a pharmacist, my mom is a midwife, my sister is a dentist as well. So yeah, I mean, it was quite obvious where I was going to end up, to be honest. I think it's just in my genes. And I've just always been like that. I've always been the kind of person who wants to help people. Most of my friends used to call me their doctor even when I was, in, I was still in high school. So I always knew that I would definitely get into the medical field as soon as I was done with high school. Did you consider studying anything outside of the medical field? Outside of the medical field, not exactly. Um, so there was this thing about my sister being a dentist already, right? And I was like, mm, okay, my sister is already a dentist. And I don't want there to be two dentists in the home. So I was like, well, I might as well do something different. So at first, I thought of doing something called bioinformatics. Probably just because it sounded fancy, to be honest. I don't think I even really understood what it was about. But yeah, I, I, I thought, okay, let me do bioinformatics. When I read on it, it sounded like it had a lot to do with biology. And for me, biology was one of my most favorite subjects. And I thought, wow, I think I would excel in this. So let me pursue it. 
And then I had a long chat with uh, with one of my, well, a family friend, right? And then he was like, but can't you see you're just running away from what you're destined to be? I mean, look at yourself. You are in the medical, medical field. So why don't you just go there? And then I thought, hmm, actually, you might have a point, you know? He's like, no, seriously, I think you're just running away from it. And so eventually, I applied and I put medicine as my first choice at the University of Zimbabwe. Um, but I didn't get it. <laughs> I was actually given some degree, which I really didn't want. And then I thought, okay, so I'm not going to use it. And then uh, my sister then said, no, 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 no. Why don't you just keep uh, trying to change your degree? Because you can do that once you've enrolled, you can then try and change because some people don't actually then enroll into the dental school. So I went and then I wrote a letter about how I'm so passionate about helping people and treating people. And then I got into dental school. Um, so at first I really thought in my mind, I don't want to be a dentist, I don't want to be a dentist initially. Then the first two years we'll be learning with the medical students. So I thought maybe I'll change and then I'll turn my degree into a medical degree. Then when we started the third year rotations, uh, that's when we were then introduced to dentistry lectures. When I started learning dentistry, it just came so naturally to me. Effortless. <laughs> I mean, of course I studied, but not as much as I had to study for medicine and surgery. And I mean, of course I still excelled in medicine and surgery, but still, to me, I was just like, wow, you know what, actually dentistry is for me. So this is why I'm always saying dentistry chose me, not that I chose dentistry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I finished doing my eyebrows off camera and now we're going into eyeshadows. I'm going to do something really, really interesting today. I'm actually going to use a lip stain as an eyeshadow. Right, so today we're using Benjamin from Fold Cosmetics. It's a very deep purple, so it's gonna be great to really like smoke out the eye. You can see that. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it in the outer corner first. Like that can create a V, and then I should just use my finger. Mission Hospital during the attachment. What was that like? So, Howard Mission Hospital wasn't actually an attachment. So, the difference between um, attachment and um, what I was doing at Howard Mission Hospital is that during our training at at uh, University of Zimbabwe, we would go to rural attachments, which they found to be very important because you then get to understand the human being as a whole, you get to understand all the social factors, economic factors um, that affect someone's health. So these are things that we had to learn whilst we were studying from the time that we were in first year. So we'd go on rural attachment and we'd go to district hospitals and for me that was probably one of my most favorite, favorite parts of um, um, my studies. I really loved just going into the community, learning about people, different cultures or different um, social backgrounds of people. And so yeah, I then started doing my internship when I finished school. So during my internship, um, that's when I went for an outreach in the rural areas, which was at Tower Mission Hospital. And so when we went there, that's when I got to see the place and I got to see how it was just so well equipped, but they didn't have a dentist there. So, um, okay, hold on. So I'm just gonna go into the Jack and Guido 
eyeshadow palette. Please forgive mine, it's so old um, and battered and dirty, but that's because I use it all the time because I love it. So I'm just going to take uh, this color, which is Life, and I'm going to use it on top of that purple to kind of give my crease a bit of depth and a bit of color. You were telling us that when you were at Howard, you noticed that the, the hospital was actually quite well equipped, but they didn't have a dentist. Yeah, they didn't have a dentist. And so I asked the administrator and I was like, so what's the deal here? Like, you guys have a really good unit. Why don't you have a dentist? And they were just like, because nobody wants to come. <laughs> no one has, has come or has been sent to come and work here. Then I'm like, oh, okay. Then he was just like, okay, so maybe one of you might actually come and work here. So after you, you learn dental school, first year all the way to fifth year, when you're done, you graduate, then you start working um, in the government as an intern. And then when you're done with your internship, you can choose to get into private practice. Uh, and start working in private practice. Or you can go and work in the district, which was not a very popular choice amongst my peers, I can tell you that. A lot of people went into private practice. But for me, I don't know, I just felt like I really, really wanted to go into the community and do some public service or public health. And that's what I chose to do. So I then, started actually uh, trying to process uh, getting a district post which is then uh, remaining in government after your internship. Oh, right. I'm supposed to I noticed you're using... <laughs> yeah. I, I noticed you're using a blush, a yeah. blush on your... So you've used a lip stain on your eyes mm -hmm. and now you're using a blush... Um, a blush on your eyes as well. What would you say to people who may be a bit surprised at how <laughs> you're interchanging between different things? It's because Jackie's products are just that good. That's that's the fact. They're you know multi-functional. You can use them forever. And this orange blush is the best blush in the whole wide world. Um, I can tell you this. It's a confession. This is the only blush in my kit. I use this blush on every single client, whether you're Caucasian, whether you're, you're very light, you're very dark, this blush works on everyone, every skin color, it's amazing. So I love to use it and I always love to use it um, as a transition color. So transition means just below your, your brow bone, that's where you're going to put a bit of orange. It kind of just makes everything blend in well together. Do you wear makeup to work? No, nope. I actually don't. <laughs> I don't. I mean, come on with the mask and everything. And right now, with COVID and everything, I mean, it's hectic, okay? It's hectic. Uh, so I usually don't. Um, probably because of the nature of my work and what I have to wear at work. But if you're just going to be using like the ordinary like cloth masks that we're wearing right now, you can put on makeup and I'll show you how you can do that. It's basically all about the eyes. Make your eyes pop, uh, just conceal under eye and leave this whole area bare. We still don't look on point. So. so you've been doing videos on YouTube that are about your dentistry, that are about makeup, that are about uh, your relationships, sometimes you're singing. Was what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? Um, hmm. So the video that I actually put up when I then decided to do a YouTube channel was me singing Zazisa by Janet Mayor. Mundo Zazisa, Mari. And. When I did that video, I think that I was probably the most honest and I'm pretty sure the main message that I said where people were complaining because they just wanted to hear me sing because I kept on talking but it was just that moment where I completely decided and I was like I just want to share, period, that's it I wanted to share my journey I wanted to talk to the younger people out there telling them about how to become a dentist I wanted to inspire a young girl out there who thinks only boys can be doctors or whatever it is 
and that's what I wanted to do and I just wanted to share absolutely everything about my life. Was it, uh, was it hard to decide whether to film with your husband uh, uh, as well for your channel? <laughs> I definitely did not include him in any of my videos before we were engaged. I think he only featured when we got engaged. <laughs> because I just think that, you know how it is, like you never really know where a relationship is going. I mean, even if you really know, there's always that, you know what, <laughs> let me protect my peace. <laughs> And then eventually when we were engaged and I, I was sure that, okay, this is where it's going. And also the fact that he's very supportive of my YouTube channel, then I knew that he's definitely someone I can introduce uh, onto the platform. And he's always encouraging me to post videos. And I really love that. You, you guys have a beautiful wedding. Can you tell us a bit about your wedding? How did you go about planning it? Um, how did you decide how you are going to celebrate? Okay, before I answer that, so right now I'm cutting the crease using a concealer. So what this does is it really covers out your eye and it makes your eye pop. Okay, so when you put concealer like this, then when you're going to put your eyeshadow color, it's really just going to stick and then it's going to be much brighter. Our wedding, okay, so you know how um, Aurora is such a trend right now, like the whole dressing up for your Aurora, matching outfits, uh, a cake, and you know, the whole shebang, right? People are already doing that, and I knew for a fact that I was going to do that if I was going to have just Aurora right or no water, which is the traditional wedding then we actually talked about it with Faye and we're like listen we can't have this twice because to me that is already a wedding you've got a cake you've got matching outfits you've got a caterer you've got deco so why must you do it twice you know and he obviously felt the same and he's he's always been a person who likes being authentic and he's always felt like, you know, having big, glamorous weddings <laughs> sometimes is not really necessary and not always something that the couple wants, but it's more about people, right? So we really wanted to keep it authentic, get to who we truly are. And so, yeah, we definitely pushed for that. So we managed to do it. And for us, we are, like, our Christian background is very strong, our Catholic background is very strong. So we, we, we really, really wanted um, to have the wedding in a church. And well, as you have it, uh, at my father's homestead, there is a Roman Catholic church and we're both Catholic. So we managed to have the wedding right there. Soon after Aurora, we went to the church and we had the wedding and voila, we were done. It was just beautiful. Actually, it surpassed everything that we even imagined. We didn't even think it would turn out to be so amazing, but it was just beautiful. Even the deco was actually DIY. Um, <laughs> we just hired uh, chairs, tables, and the tent. And then everything else, like even the vases, those are just wine bowls that I spray painted gold. We bought flowers in Baokit. What's it called? Floribunda. And my friends just arranged the flowers and everything. I printed out the programs, used them to decorate, used paper doilies as placements, guys. And the funny thing is when you're planning it, in your mind you're just like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And then on the day, it was just so beautiful and I'm like, how did this happen? But yeah, I was, I was so grateful, so, so grateful. I couldn't have done it without my family, without my friends. Could not have done it. Okay, I think I'm done with the orange, guys. What do you think? Mm. It's coming together, right? Oh, yeah. I don't think. Okay. So I'm going to be using glazed, which is a really, really um, goldy, yellow goldy color. And it's going to blend so well with the orange and the purple. Let's go in. Look at that. Let your eye really pop. And you just bring it all the way to the top. That really opens up your eye. See? Okay.
doing now? Okay, so I'm using the Jackie and Guido foundation. This foundation is really high coverage and it's super matte. So I want to show you the trick that I was talking about, about um, putting on makeup during this pandemic. Okay, so just concentrate on your eyes. And that also means your under eyes. So you want to hide these baggy eyes. So you just put, you use your ring finger, you put a bit of foundation on your ring finger and then you put it in like that. And you just look up. And voila, you're done. So this foundation really dries really quickly. So you want to work super fast. Okay, I've done half my face, but I think you can really see the difference. Yeah, and there. And you're pretty much done. Guys, I don't have much to cover on my skin. So it's really just about brightening up your face. And you just want to look like, you know, you did something, right? You put foundation where you need the foundation. That's all. What's, what's the hardest thing about choosing a foundation? Shade, to be honest, that's the hardest thing. I think that that's what I've noticed people really struggle with. So you have to, whenever you're picking a shade, always use your chest, not your neck, because your neck is always like a totally different color. Mm -hmm. So use your chest, because people see your chest and your face more, and that's what you use to shade match, okay? And um, hmm, what else can I say? Yeah, that's about it. And make sure you're under natural lighting when you're picking your, your foundation. Okay, so now I'm going to set the foundation that I put with this uh, loose powder. It's also Jack and Guido. And I'm using the shade Almond. Uh, she's got many different shades. She also has a yellow powder. But to be honest, me, I'm not that yellow. I think I'm not. So I don't really like putting something that's too yellow because then it's just too bright and it scares people off, to be honest, you look like a ghost. So <laughs> you want to put something that's uh, a bit closer to your skin tone. Uh, the main idea is to just set your foundation so that it doesn't move, it doesn't budge when you're sweating, um, when you put on that mask, right? And um, it's going to catch all the oils when you get oily. So that's the whole idea. You're telling us about your favorite Zen YouTubers. Oh yes, favorite Zen YouTubers. I started with Mode. Um, I'm just gonna go randomly, guys, and I hope I say everyone. I'm on a mission to make everybody known. <laughs> okay, so we've got Chantal Gerardi. She is the owner of Risa Gerardi, the brand. She's um, uh, a fashion designer as well. We have ah, there's this girl called Shamae. I really like Shamae. Um, we've got Joella Marita. We've got oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, we've got Claudia Clovo. She's a YouTuber based in Malawi. And right now she's actually doing a series where she's like showcasing places in Malawi. Come on, she's representing. Potato Mommy! My goodness, how can I forget Potato Mommy? She's so funny. She always has does like story times on her YouTube channels, um, on her YouTube videos. Then who else? Zoom YouTube as well. There's so many guys. There's so many, but I think those are the ones that I, I can think of like at the top of my head. Okay, so I'm using the same eyeshadow palette and I'm actually going to use Muddy and Zim to contour. Uh, so contouring just makes your face look, you know. <gasps> look at that. So perfect. I love doing this. Like I said, you can use this eyeshadow palette for everything and use all her products for almost everything. So most people think that to get to become a dentist or a medical professional that you have to have perfect grades from the day you were born and you know you have to be some sort of prodigy. <laughs> How did you feel after your O-level results came out? So my O-level results, I actually got three A's, seven B's. I can confidently say that now because now I am a successful dentist. <laughs> but trust me, back in the day, I don't think I had the confidence to even say it. Because of that, exactly what you're saying, um, you know, our high schools really give pressure 
on on students to have straight A's, you know. But then if you look at it, my A's were in sciences, so it kind of really shows you where that person is headed. You know, it doesn't make sense for you to say you can't do sciences because you have straight A's. But my A's are in sciences, so what do you mean? Okay, I'm going in that orange blush and I'm just going to use it on my cheeks bring a bit of color to the face so yeah, so I I knew that I definitely wanted to do sciences in a level and um, my high school wasn't offering me sciences simply because I had three A's um, but uh, we fought a good fight, my mother and I and also I had quite a bit of support with um, the a nun who was in the guitar club because you know I'm so musical <laughs> and she already had plans to kind of like leave the guitar club in my hands because she wanted to go to Germany on holiday so she was like listen I'm actually counting on this girl so she has to come and just give her what she wants to study <laughs> and I was given and funny enough I actually got more points than some people who had six A's or eight A's in all levels so really and truly speaking it's not about the number of A's um, but it's about you what are you passionate about what are you naturally good at and are you determined enough to get to where you want to go um, <clears throat> so after my A levels I actually had a, 10 points so I didn't get 15 points um, but I had 10 points and I applied for medicine and I didn't get it but by God's grace <laughs> <laughs> I managed to change my program to dentistry, like I said before. Okay, so on my lips, I am going to be using Diva Lip Stain from Vault. Ugh. It's like a plumish color, and I'm going to use it on the outer edges of my lips. Like a liner, okay? Now, what's the difference between, say, a lipstick, lip stain, lipstick and a lip gloss uh, a lip stain is it usually dries really matte and it doesn't come off so easily a lipstick it can be sheer can be satin usually comes off uh, but you can also have matte lipsticks which can really stick on and stay for long um, and the lip gloss is just it's glossy it's really oily and it has that really glossy look and then in the middle i'm going to be using chi mama from vault cosmetics it's a really bright red and i'm going to use it right in the center mm, this is a very colorful look i like it very holiday holiday like holiday season and there you have it. I'm pretty much done. Should we do some shimmer? Let's do some shimmer. I'm going to use <laughs> I'm going to use Evolve from the eyeshadow palette as a shimmer or like how we say it as YouTubers my highlighter. So I'm gonna use Evolve as my highlighter. Make my cheeks pop. Yay! Now that you're all dolled up, you're on your way to a client. Yeah, I have a client waiting. So you have a client waiting, but it's not a it's not a dental appointment. This is not a dental appointment. This is a makeup client. So I got a dash. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. You can ask me. Mm -hmm. How do you balance both? Um. Well, I started off just doing it on weekends and. So yeah, I mean, basically that's how I've been doing it. I do it on weekends. When I was staying out of town, I couldn't do midweek like in the evenings. Um, but then now I stay in Harare, so I can do it midweek evenings for evening events. And weekends, most of my weekends, I'm doing makeup plans for weddings, loras and everything. I absolutely love it. I feel like the two jobs are so linked because I'm all about fixing smiles. I'm all about spreading smiles. And that's what I do. When I do someone's makeup, when they look in the mirror, they've got this huge smile on their face. It's the same thing when I do someone's filling, when I fix their teeth.
teeth, when they look in the mirror, they just have this huge smile on their face. That's, that's it. I fix smiles. I spread smiles. I'm in the smile industry, guys. That's what I do. So, yeah. So, I think if you're passionate about something, go for it. Um, and there's so many people who are doing the same thing. Like, a hobby turns into an actual source of income. And there's nothing that can stop you. And it's always a good thing to have like different sources of income you can't just depend on one thing just you know go bold um if you're multi-talented then make use of the gift that you're given yeah thank you dr zani you look beautiful thank you